Hey guys, so let's continue with question nine. Again, we are still looking at the cubic and the um, hyperbola. Okay, let's just read this question. So it says, determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph of G that has a positive gradient. Now, what's important here, right? Let's go back to the graph, and I know I've made a right mess of it, but let's just remember what's going on, right? So let's just, here is the hyperbola, and we know it's been shifted, right? And we can tell it's been shifted from what? From this equation. So what this equation tells us, it actually tells us the where the two asymptotes meet. So we know that this asymptote is where x equals, I'm sorry, that's where y equals 3, and this one is where x equals negative 3, okay? Now, we know with a hyperbola, if it was just a normal hyperbola where it hadn't been shifted, our axis of symmetry is this y equals x line, okay? And we see the y equals x line goes through the origin, which is the point that the two asymptotes are for a hyperbola that hasn't been shifted, Okay, but this hyperbola has been shifted. And the point of intersection, so that origin point, right, for this y equals x line, right, transformed, right, or shifted for this particular scenario would now no longer be 0 and 0. It would actually be negative 3 and 3 because it's been shifted now. These are asymptotes, not axes, okay? Sorry, I know they look like axes, but they're asymptotes. Okay, so instead of that y equals x line going through the origin, it's now been shifted, as we can see with the asymptotes, it's been shifted three units, right, to the left, okay, and three units up. And so its point of origin, if you want to call that, or the point where the two asymptotes coincide, is now going to be negative three and three. So all we need to do is translate that into a graph, right, into a straight line graph, y equals mx plus c, okay, and sh we can then get the final or the general um, equation for that line. So you've seen here, I've written that origin point, that point that it goes through. I've said y equals x plus c. Now, you could be saying, well, what about the gradient? But the gradient of that axis of symmetry has not changed, right? The gradient is still 1, okay? But it's just the shift, the C, that we don't know. So sub in the point, negative 3 and 3, which I've done, and then you get C equals 6. So the general form of the axis of symmetry for this hyperbola with a positive gradient is Y equals X plus C. Okay, it's very important here because they're asking you, again, as I keep telling you, these are compound questions. They build on each other, right? So the previous question gave us an indication of the asymptotes. Then we could do this question, get the axis of symmetry, because we knew what the asymptotes were. Okay, and that's very important with functions because they are compounding like that. Okay, then it says here, determine the value of x for which f of x is greater than or equal to g of x in the interval negative infinity to zero. So what's important here is when we go back to this graph, we're only looking at x this side, okay? And we're looking, basically, if you want to put it down to colors, where pink is above orange, okay? So we can see that pink is above orange from negative infinity to three, right? We can see that. But remember, I mean, to negative three. But remember, at negative three, the hyperbola is undefined because that's an asymptote. So I put a soft bracket with negative three to say it's not included because we know that it's not included in the hyperbola graph. Okay, so we've done there. Let's keep going towards zero. Ah, and we see from E up until x equals zero, okay, we can see that the pink is above the orange. So we know that our x coordinate of E is negative two, right? We know that from I have the answer to B, right? Look over here, right? That was the coordinates of E. So it's negative two, included, right? It's included, and to zero, included, okay? Because there aren't any restrictions on the graphs necessarily here. But remember, we only go to zero because we're only looking at the X values from zero to negative infinity, okay? So that's the answer there. I've just rewritten it over here, but it's exactly the same. Remember, negative infinity always has a soft bracket because it's a concept, right? Infinity is a concept. You can't reach it, right? Because you can keep, keep going in the direction forever. Okay. So let's now do our last question 
of this particular functions question, as you can see, it's really been quite complicated, right? So it says here, yeah, determine the values of k, right? So it's basically saying k can be more than one value, but determine a sort of restriction on k. If the graph of f is shifted so that the new graph, h of x minus k, equals that equation, right? We really know that equation for the cubic, does not intersect the graph of g for x greater than zero. So the best thing to do here, right, is let's go look at the graph. And you might be um, surprised to see how much I actually leverage this graph, right, the actual drawing, but it's really helpful to visualize. So it's saying here, okay, we can see, right, that it intersects um, f of x and g of x intersect over here, right, at this point. But it's saying, no, 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 we want to shift right? We wanted to shift y. So remember with y, you either shift it down or you shift it up. If I shift it up, right, there's still going to be an intersection where x is positive. And what they've asked us is it's, they're saying it does not intersect the graph for where x is positive, right, or equal to zero. So shifting it up is not going to help us. Shifting it down may. So if I shift my graph down, right, if I move my y-intercept down, Okay, then what happens is it will intersect with the y-axis, right, at a point below where this g of x graph is, right, and then it will never intersect with g of x again, because g of x has an asymptote over there, so it never gets below the point, um, was that 3, I think it was 3, hey, that was where y equals 3. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the minimum amount we can move it down so that from x equals 0 onwards, it never intersects with g of x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's just find out what the difference is between the intercept, the y-intercept of the cubic or the pink, and the y-intercept of the orange. Okay, so I'm saying, let's first find the y-intercept of the orange, right? Remember, the orange is the hyperbola. I'm just using these different phrases to help you with some different representations. Okay, so I put that in, I make x equal to 0, and we see that it's um, uh, y value there, right? It's y value is 3 and 2 thirds. So we know, right, that we're going to have to shift our intercept down 16 over 3 at least, just to get to the same intercept, right? We're going to have to shift it down 16 over 3 to just get to the same intercept as this orange graph as the hyperbola, which is g of x. But remember, it says that it can't ever equal it, okay? So it actually has to be below it. So we know that we, the shift, the subtraction that we take away from 9, the shift down that we take from 9 has to be greater than 16 over 3, okay? So what's interesting here, right, is they've written k on this side of the equation, but we actually want to make a change to 9, don't we? Which is the intercept. So let's just, so h of x, I'm just, this is a little side. So h of x is going to be negative 2x cubed minus 11x squared minus 12x plus 9 plus k. Do you see that? So we know here that k has to be the negative version of 16 over 3 in order to make that 9 smaller. Okay? So we know that it can be 16 over 3 and it can be anything bigger than 16 over 3. Well, actually, it can't be 16 over 3 exactly, because at 16 over 3, it actually intersects g of x at x equals 0. So it has to be 16 over 3 or more, right, in order to keep that 9 below that intercept of the hyperbola, okay? So the answer here is k has to be greater than, right? Oh, sorry, not greater than. It has to be less than right, less than negative 16 over 3, okay, so we're saying at negative 16 over 3, right, that's where those two intercepts would coincide, but they cannot coincide, but if you take a number that is less than, right, negative 16 over 3, so if it's less than, if it's that side, right, which is basically a bigger subtraction from the 9, then that's fine, so that is your final answer there. Okay, so it's a little bit of a tricky one to sometimes rationalize, and that's why I try to keep it as visual as, as possible. It's a difficult question, okay? So don't be disheartened if you're like, I do not know what's going on. You go over my reasoning again, try this yourself, and I hope that that's helpful. Okay, so we finished with that question. Let's move now on to question 10 and 11, and then we will be done with this paper. 
Cheers, guys.